Hello my soccer universe, I am back from vacation and I thought since on the days that I was traveling we had all the draws made, it is a good time to recap this video Champions League qualification very briefly with a focus mostly on the playoffs and then make a quick group stage analysis because it's quite interesting what's happening there as well and i will do then uh similar videos for the europa league and of course the conference league in all separate packages and you'll get them relatively soon together now uh champions league qualification uh, i love these qualification rounds because there are so many 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 teams in there and it's a, a really hard struggle now of the early rounds you got if you go to my community post you got my thoughts on each and every one of these rounds uh that you haven't matches played so i don't want to mention much especially up until the playoffs to me qualification in earnest begins with round three because there you find the first big hitters however we had one team that started in the first qualifying round that almost made it to the group stage and that team was of course uh, Rakov Częstochowa uh, from the Polish champions actually a rather small team if you look at it overall but I've also, also mentioned two or maybe three more teams uh, first off uh, Breda Blik from Iceland who actually hosted the preliminary tournament romped through that one and then only got eliminated um, in uh, round two by Copenhagen which in the end made it then to uh, the group stage and then we also have to talk about the Srinsky Mostar from Bosnia who actually like Iceland no uh, Bosnia team has ever made it to the group stage uh, they did not make a big dent in uh, Champions League qualifying but at least they then made it into a European group stage and lastly I of course the biggest story is of course Klaxvik who managed to oust uh, Ferenc Varos from Budapest with a 3-0 away win from home. Then, in the next round, uh, they uh, uh, eliminated the Swedish champions Hecken on penalties away from home, and then they went to uh, uh, Molde, where they also won the first, for the first game, but in the end fell in overtime. A rather, rather remarkable story. We also had one uh, desperately upsetting, sad, however you want to call it, story uh, in the tie between Dinamo Zagreb and Ike, where the first leg had to be postponed because Dinamo fans who were not allowed to be in the stadium still traveled. And of course, questions have to have to be asked whether border police didn't uh, step in there and stop them or, or whatever. Um, they instigated fights when Ike fan got killed, so that the game had to be call, called off. And I was actually happy, happy to see that it was tight, but that Ike actually moved on from that one. Um, another one, since we have it <laughs> back here, a few teams that I want to talk about is, of course, OM, who got eliminated by the other Athens team in Champions League qualifying, by uh, Panathinaikos, also on penalties at home big 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 shocker there for them uh we have sparta prague um uh, actually running it tight again against copenhagen yeah they are, they are <laughs> fit, fit. they will feature heavily in this video i don't have a jersey of them uh also eliminating sparta prague on penalties away from home uh a three a, a mad three three tie uh in the return leg where it was one one after a regulation and three three um read my post on that that that, one, that that was definitely one of the standout ties there so sparta prague out uh we also have to talk about very much austrian perspective sturm graz who just stood no chance against a psv team a psv team that i'm wearing him here that actually really romped through this group group stage uh the 4-1 scoreline for uh loss in eindhoven was flattering to sturm graz psv just on a different level and then uh while they were look checking in the second leg sturm had a one nil lead as soon as the e equals there was only one winner and then uh similar story they actually in the playoffs then and let's talk about the playoffs there uh that uh, psv then controlled rangers however rangers took twice the lead and psv could only equalize and so they went to the return leg with the same result that they had last year where then rangers managed an away win however there was no away win this time around psv completely destroying rangers uh in a matter that bordered on humiliation 
right there. But PSV had, had it coming. They have been trying to get it back into the Champions League. Now, I think for this was the fourth year running and they sometimes really call it close. I remember a tie against Benfica that they probably should have won against Rangers. Arguably, they were, were the better team. There were many other failings in there where PSV has always been a Champions League caliber team that has not made it to the Champions League. Let's put it just that. Uh, that way. So um, Panathinaikos beating Marseille then had to play against Braga. Braga just better. Uh, it was tight and especially in the return leg there was an open net miss by Spora for Panathinaikos but Braga were just the better team and uh, won both uh, uh, both legs to uh, advance on the 3-1 aggregate score. Um, of the other ones, Galatasaray against Molde. Yes, they got the away win and there was a brilliant uh, Icardi goal in there. Uh, but Molde gave them quite some trouble and there was the chance that Molde would have made it into overtime. However, then the goal was called for offside and then in the end Galatasaray get the winner. But it's good to see the Turkish champions back uh, there. Um, as I said, Ayk moved on against Dinamo Zagreb, then they were also, um, like Panathinaikos, beaten twice by Royal Antwerp. Again, rather, rather tight game. Uh, in, in the end, Ajax uh, got an equalizer in the home leg, both pushing forward and Royal Antwerp uh, scored there. So the Belgian champions are back and this is the first time that Antwerp are in the Champions League. So it's also kind of a cool story with Marc van Bommel getting a little bit um, of some credit there, you know, after really failing at PSV Eindhoven. I still remember that game against Lask. That got him sacked. Um, we mentioned Copenhagen and Rakov. They played then in the Champions League uh, playoff as well. And it was a much, much tighter contest than the score lines would suggest, especially in the first leg. I mean, Copenhagen actually stole that one. They got an early goal, but then Rakov got an equalizer, was struggling for offside, created more chances. I think Rakov would definitely have um deserved a little bit more and even the return like yes they completely missed on, on the first half but they got the equalizer late on um and were pushing for an equalizer to send them into overtime it just did not happen so that was the one uh, miracle that really did uh, another miracle that did not uh, another miracle that did not happen and then lastly i want to talk about the team that i actually like most here which is uh, young boys Let's nice connect with Lask and I need a young boy short. They're just way too, too, too expensive. It was really tight. I mean, the first leg, nothing to talk home, home about. Second leg, yes, young boys, 3 nil. Oh, Maccabi hit the woodwork three times. Young boys controlled most all, all of the time, but they are back in the champ, Champions League. And so, yeah, um, looks, it was a very interesting qualifying round. And now we have to talk about the draw quick wardrobe and background change i'm always wearing for these type of videos a million away jersey because that's the lucky jersey in the champions league and for the draw i first want to talk from milan perspective i mean you see here on the left the pots for the group stage draw with the groups already assigned to to to, to them uh, but looking at that from a million perspective, I always knew, yeah, it's gonna be a tough draw. However, there's a small chance that you get one of the easier teams from the first pot. Nothing against Benfica and Feyenoord, but those were the teams that I wanted because everyone else is just a way, way tougher draw. From pot two, everything would have been uh, horrendous, I would say, with the exception maybe of Leipzig and Porto, but still not opponents that I, I would like. And from pot four, it was always clear the Newcastle had nuclear option. And boy, did Milan get hammered in that draw. And I already made a video on that. Uh, if you just look here at the groups, uh, just glancing over, over it, there's one group that sticks out, and that's the Milan group F. PSG, Dortmund, Milan, Newcastle. Uh, and it's also not only are this team incredibly tightly matched, and I probably should, I, I will show you the, uh, what my, my ratings uh, spit, spit out here. Just look here. Here's the spread for the different groups. Um, and just look at Group F, how tight these teams are, are, are together. The light blue cross, uh, you don't see uh, here as much, uh, but it clearly indicates that this is the strongest group by average rating. But it's just staggering. I've never seen a group that is that, 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 that close. 
And what's even more remarkable, the Newcastle, the Pot 4 team, are actually the favorites. I think I remember this once with Leipzig before something happened again, but it's a very, very rare feat that the Pot 4 team is actually the highest rated one in there. Tells you about the strength of the Premier League in general. Um, but going back to the group stage draw, this is the group. And there are so many storylines in there. Just from a million million perspective, you have Milan and PSG, of course, Dolla Roma, um, an unwelcome return. However, you also have the other goalie, Mike Menio, who was at PSG, and they wanted to have him. So, one storyline. Borussia Dortmund, of course, Pulisic, that's the all. Obviously, Milan never matched up well with Dortmund, also Gala Gabriel. And of course, Milan and Newcastle with Sandro Tonali uh, returning to the San Siro much, much, much sooner than probably both teams would have liked. So that's one. Just glancing over the other groups, I think Group C is a really interesting and underrated one. I mean, Napoli and Real Madrid, I think Real Madrid will win this group relatively easy. But do not underestimate only on Berlin. They are really, really hard to play against and they will have almost sold out Olympiastadion. Uh, and Braga is also a good team. But of course, Napoli and Real Madrid should make it out of that group. Um, and then when I look at the last two groups, when Barca and Manchester City just got kissed by the draw. Uh, absolutely. I mean, Manchester City couldn't have asked for a nicer, nicer group. They steamrolled Leipzig. So that's a given. Uh, a Red Star Belgrade Young Boys will not offer up any resistance. This is the sweetest draw that they could have. And Barcelona also will really like the chance against Porto Schachter and Royal Antwerp. Uh, group A, of course, Bayern against Manchester United. But then the other two, yeah. Maybe Group B also. I actually think that Sevilla could very well finish last in that one, given their troubles. And Arsenal PSV should be considered favorites there, but never discount loss. Uh, just to look at the impact of the draw, I show you here also the overall change. Uh, red bar, of course, means negative impact, worse than expected. Green, positive. And you see, Group F, all bars red, especially Dortmund got hammered and PSG because Milan and Newcastle were, were probably the strongest teams out of their respective pots. Uh, we also see that Benfica, Inter, not very happy. Group C, all a little bit worse than off than you would expect, but not nothing big severe also among the loser of draw because with Arsenal and PSV you got really really tough opponents even with loss there and as for uh, the ones that are happy look no further than Group E, Atletico, Lazio, Celtic. This is a, this is a very tight group and Feyenoord uh, I think this is Atletico will win this one but um, second spot is up for grabs. Group G and Group H of course those are the happy ones and then uh, I want to finish out who are the fav favorites now. I mean you can already tell Manchester City, thanks to this sweet draw, all the well favorites. I mean, 92% already already move, moving on. It's a huge gap at this moment, but it's more or less down more down to the draw than to actually. Yes, they're the strongest team, but um, Bayern is a little bit closer. Arsenal actually, I was surprised to see number three ahead of Real Madrid. Uh, and then you see the other ones. You know, uh, arrow up means you actually change positions for uh, a post and pre-draw. Uh, Barcelona, United, Na Napoli, Inter, but realistically it's the top four that are the Champions League favorites. I'm not even that sure about Arsenal as well. What did you think about uh, qualifying at the group stage draw? Please la la let me know, know your thoughts on that one. I, uh, how did your team fare? Do you have a team in there? And yeah, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!